All right, Jesse on fire, welcome back to the channel. So let's do it. Let's just dive right into the deep end, right? So today we're gonna talk about Dana White Trump video and we're gonna talk about uh, Israel Adesanya weighing in on the NBA players walkout because he had some supportive words, whatever. And I'm just gonna tell you what I think about all of it. I'm not gonna be making statements about politics. I'm just gonna be talking about what they're doing, how it relates to the UFC in general and just sports in general, okay? Because it's important. It honestly is. Like, it says a lot about Dana White. Like, it says a lot about Dana White. That's that's really where I'm going to focus the you know, bulk of my energy in this video is just talking about Dana as a person, businessman, and just his position in general, right? So first of all, let's talk about Dana, right? So Dana White, in case you guys missed this, did a six-minute Trump campaign video that he put out on Twitter. Like, just straight up, like, like, there's no ambiguity, right? Like it's literally Dana White in front of a camera saying, here's why I support Donald Trump. Here's why you should vote Republican. You know, Trump this, Trump that. Like I support him here. I mean, literally like it's like one thing that, that struck me was it was very clearly written out. You know, like it's a, it's a speech that he was at least partially reading. He's so good at that, man. Like he, you watch some of these people, like especially like you watch the RNC or the DNC, either of them, and you watch people standing there like giving their statements because they're, you know, they, they were in the press for whatever reason. And they're like, I found myself in an untenable situation. And from there, I knew I had no choice but to act. And I'm like, geez, man. Well, maybe you should learn to act because you've got a platform here. You could have a future in politics or social media if you had one millimeter of charisma, okay? One millimeter. Can so, like, please, 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 let, let, let there just be bestowed on me some kind of like, uh, you know, controversial issue where I get thrown into the media light, okay? Throw me in front of that camera and then give me something to read. I'll be like, so they want me to read this. <clears throat> We're live, right? We're live. I think I'm gonna just go off cuff. Anyway, point being, Dana did excellent, excellent job. Uh, at, like just the way he delivered. I'm not saying like the. I'm not talking about like the content of the video one way or the other because I'm just not doing that. But like, he's he's excellent at it, man. Like it's almost like he's had a lot of practice sitting in front of cameras and and talking. It just means you know practice makes perfect. But but here's the thing, okay? You have the. You have the collective CEOs of the world, the collective like power base of the world running scared right now, okay? Terrified to make consumers angry at them, right? Now, what is going to make a certain segment of consumers more angry than you coming out and publicly endorsing Donald Trump? Nothing, right? Like nothing, I mean, nothing. And the only person or the only kind of person that would do that is a person who is so stack, is just so set in their position and their sport, etc., that they do not give to, like, like just none, you know? Just like, yeah, this is what I think. And you wanna know why? Because Trump had my back, right? And that's the thing that, this is, this is the point that I'm making. What it says about Dana is Dana, for whatever everybody says about him, you know, oh, Dana's do 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 he is loyal to the bone. And me doing what I do, I've always known that. I could read that in him and he proves it. And if, if nothing else proves it, this proves it. Because Trump had, I mean, you know, Trump had, like, Trump's been the president for like two seconds, okay? He's been a, a, you know, a hotel owner who has these gigantic stadiums that you could put fights on. He's been, he's been doing that for 50 years, right? So like him and Dana have a relationship. He's helped Dana put on shows. He's helped Dana promote UFC. And ultimately he helped Dana like with, with fighter visas. Like they have a great relationship. And the fact that Dana is willing to just stick his neck out there like that. Now, I will say if I was a UFC shareholder, I might've been like, dude, are you sure this is a good idea? And that also demonstrates how like Dana's position inside of the organization. Like that's that's the other thing. Like Dana, like so, they got acquired by uh, you know by uh, what's it called EMI, right? So EMI obviously owns the controlling stake in the company. Now, if you think that a, that if there was any power at the board level that they would allow the CEO of the company to do a statement endorsing Trump, like if it was just a board level, you're out of your mind. 
You're out of your mind. There's no way that they would do that. None. And I'm not saying that they would like be, make him go out and publicly like say anything negative about Trump, but they would never allow that. Never. And so what that means is it's a dictatorship at UFC, right? Or at the very least, the relationship that Dana has with, uh, with the guy at EMI that they, they run the business together, Dana has total autonomy, right? Like it, it might not be a dictatorship if you want to do something crazy, but they do not, they allow Dana to do whatever he wants because that's what's always worked, right? That is what's always worked. And if, if you can find it somewhere, look up the documentary, Three Guys and Three Letters. And it's about the Fertitta brothers and Dana building the UFC. I obviously, if you know my background, was like deeply moved by this documentary, man. Because you just, people don't understand, man. I've built a company that was, you know, I've, I've been involved founding companies, but there's one that was mine, like my baby, that I poured everything I had into, like Dana with UFC. Now, obviously he had, the Fertitas were his partners, they were in on it, but like, the UFC is Dana's baby, okay? Like his baby. He wasn't the money behind it. He was a guy on the ground making the motor run. And like, you just cannot understand what that's like. Like you cannot understand what that's like. When you're building something, it is like your baby, okay? And like, there's a point that I never reached. I'll be honest with you. I never reached this point. But like, there is a point where you've built the machine big enough to where if you just walked off, the machine will go on and continue to gain value, right? Now, Dana has done that at the, at the UFC, right? Like he's created, and it's, which is why he can do whatever he wants now. He, I just relate to it, right? And let me tell you, someone who had my back early on when I was struggling like that, I have their back too, man. There's, it just, it, 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 there are things that just supersede, you know, social media and politics, and even like, you know, I mean, I guarantee you, there are going to be people that won't buy pay-per-views now. I guarantee, I guarantee it. I absolutely guarantee it. There are people that are so dug in right now. Now, I bet that the the number of people who are super dug in on the left, like dug in enough to where they're not going to watch the sport anymore because Dana White did that video, is probably not huge. But there will definitely be people that will swear off the UFC. Dude, look at the NBA. Like, this is where I'm going next. The playoffs are down 40% in viewership. 40%. 40%. Decline in viewership. Now, is that because people have so much other stuff going on? Is that why? Because you know, because no, like, because professional, because oh, well, whatever, professional sports. Like, I think are you serious? The they, the the ratings should be through the roof. With the UFC ratings, Jorge Masvidal sold 1.3 million pay per views on a week's notice. Okay, so the numbers having to do with eyeballs on the sport. I mean, if you're going to convince me, oh, lockdown is bad for NBA basketball, you're going to have a hard time convincing me of that. I'll tell you exactly why the numbers are down. It's because they went full politics, okay? They went full politics, right? Dana doesn't do that. Dana is, like, Dana is a human being. Dana White, Dana White the person, did a campaign video for Donald Trump, right? Do you see the difference between that and the UFC as an organization throughout their, you know, throughout their shows, taking a political stand, right? Like, like putting, putting signs up that are on one side or the other of, you know, this week's political thing, right? I mean, honestly, like, even, it, it just doesn't even matter what the message is. It's irrelevant. Like, it doesn't, it's completely irrelevant. Like, the, the point is, if the organization takes a stand, the organization takes a stand, and you're on one side or the other of an issue, then you're going to lose half the, you're going to lose 40% of the audience. I mean, plain and simple, 40%. The NBA is down 40%. You think that that's a, that's a coincidence, that number? Okay. They went full throttle BLM, like full throttle. And that, and this is like, I'm not commenting on BLM at all. Like I'm, I'm, it's a non-issue. I am going to tell you a story though in a second, because I have a crazy story about that, which I don't know. I mean, you guys, maybe you guys will know what to do with this. I, I don't know what to do with it. Something that I saw, but uh, you know, listen, like, so Israel Adesanya, he made a he made a comment about the NBA walkouts. He says uh, he was on Luke Thomas. He's like, if the NBA walkouts, if they if they fuck their money up, that's that's the owners money and the shareholders and whatever. Good. If that's what it takes to bring change, then good. Whatever has to happen, man. I'm finding my own way to change the world around me, but I'm doing that in my own life away from the media. OK, first of all, first part of that, that statement. I mean, I could poke holes in that logic for sure. The back half, my man, dude. My man, that is what I'm talking about. I'm finding my own way to change the world around me, but I'm doing that in my own life away from the media. Good, right? 
What do you think is going to do more good? Like, what do you think is going to do more good? You like, you make a, you make a, you make some kind of like, you know, viral video about, you know, where a bunch of people who already agree with you are going to, you know, share it around and, you know, you're going to build awareness. Like everyone's aware of everything, right? Or if in your own life, you go and you start volunteering at schools or you take some troubled kids and you go, listen, you want to know how I changed my life? Martial arts. Why don't you come train? Why don't you come train? And you start training four or five kids that are like bad kids, you know, bad kids who are probably a bad influence on a lot of other kids and turn them into martial artists who can control their aggression and may even turn into talented, amazing fighters, which is going to actually do more good, right? But the first part of what he said about if they fuck their money up, then the, that's the owner's money and the shareholders and whatever, good. If that's what it takes to bring change, then good. Whatever has to happen, I'm finding my own way to change the world around me. Okay, so here's the thing. There is just, like, I just, the, I don't agree in terms of how, that, like, that, that viewpoint. Like, not, not about whether things need to change or not. I'm talking about how things change, right? Like, if you really think that, like, because NBA owners make less money, that that will somehow lead to police reform and, and better policies and less, you know, I guess in this case, less black people being victimized by the police. If you, I, I just, I, I don't understand that at all. Like, uh, bringing awareness to where police are terrified, terrified to end up on TV, you know, having shot a black guy or beating up a black guy, that's, sure, I, I mean, all day long, That that is... That is the awareness that, that everybody should be like, okay, good, you know, good. People being scared of getting videotaped, shooting someone, black, white, or other, it, unjustified, is a good thing, right? I mean, you don't want people running around with guns unafraid of shooting someone in a bad situation, right? So like that, the, that, that level of awareness is good, right? But fucking up the NBA, like, dude, no. Like, no, the NBA owners, what, what are they going to do? Like, what, seriously, what are they going to do? So all you've really done by doing this is you've infected the, like, the, the issue at hand, which is, if you think this is simple, if you really think it's a simple enough issue that you can just say, everyone needs to take this, this stand as an organization, and that's going to do some kind of good, like, you know, I mean, I... I don't know. I, I, I don't agree. Like, I, I just think that what you're going to do is you're going to make 40% of the people not watch the sport. Like, you know what I mean? I guess, which is exactly what happened. Like the over global awareness is a good thing, but in sports, it doesn't belong. It just doesn't belong there, man. Like, and you want to know why? You want to know the real reason why? We have to have something, something that unifies us, right? Something that we all participate in where that is not a part of it, right? Like, that's just not a part of it. And when you make it a part of every single, like the, the like sports are like the one thing that we finally, or not, or that we, the one last thing that we still have that are not touched by that stuff, you know? But then NASCAR, we've got, oh, NASCAR needs to do this parade. And I mean, at least with NASCAR, I can understand, you know, they're like, we're going to get rid of the Confederate flag, okay? Like, you know what? That's one issue that I will say, okay? So that's one 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 race issue that I will actually tell you on camera, I don't disagree with that, okay? Like, I just don't disagree with it. And I get it, you know, in the South, it's not like, you know, it's, it, it, like, I, I understand. Like, I understand it's a, it's a symbol of the South. It's not supposedly a symbol of the, you know, Confederates that were fighting to support slavery. I completely understand that. But I don't disagree that, like, it being flown at a, at a sport, a professional sporting event, like, I don't know. I mean, because the bottom line is like, what is it? They're like, what are flags? They're symbols. They're symbols, right? And to maybe, and to the people who live in the South, this small group of people that live in the South, I get it. They understand it's something different, but that's not what it looks like to 80% of the country. 80% of the country, 80% of the country sees the Confederate flag and associates it with support of slavery. Okay. So like, why would you want that? Why would you want to fly that? Okay. So I'm, again, I am not saying people who have a Confederate flag at their house are racist. That's not what I'm saying at all. But what I am saying is that why, why, like when you know, that's what people associate it with, why would you want it on display at a professional sporting event? Right. It's the same reason, you know, that's the same reason that I'm saying BLM does not belong in the NBA, right? Like Confederate flag. That's a very divisive symbol. Just like BLM somehow became a divisive symbol. So just keep it out of sports. So like the divisive things out of sports, politics, out of sports. That's why Dana did this on his own and you're not going to see it 
UFC, like you're not gonna see UFC supports blah, 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 right? So let me tell you about the thing that I saw though, because this is honestly probably unrelated, right? Like I, I don't, I, you can look at me and see, I mean, I'm wearing a grunt style shirt. Like obviously I support police broadly in terms of they have an incredibly challenging job and I support first responders, period. Like they have a really hard job and you would be in serious trouble if you did not have police to call a lot of the time, right? Like you need them there, I support them. But let me just tell you this story because I was like, what the f So I, have you ever seen in person the police draw a gun on a person, okay? Like have you ever seen a, a cop with their gun unholstered in person ever? Because I realized, I mean, like at the shooting, I've shot at, I've, I've spent plenty of time with police officers, but I'm talking about in the street, like uniform police, gun out of holster. Because I never had, and I didn't realize that until the other day when I saw that for the first time, okay? So I'm driving on the freeway and I see there's, you know, it's going slow because there's sirens. I assume I'm coming up on an accident. I'm not coming up on an accident. I'm coming up on two cop cars uh, sequentially and they had pulled this car over. And it's just two cops. And one guy's walking up, he's walking up slow and he kind of looks like this. The other guy had his gun unholstered and was in his hands, weird. You know, like I always thought like, you unholster your gun, you know, you've got it, you know, you've got it at the ready, whatever. This guy just had it in his hand. And I mean, like I, when I tell you I'm a thousand percent sure that it was, because my wife kept asking, I'm like, dude, okay, I know, like 1000%, he had it in his hand and he was, you know, he was walking up. Now I have no context on this stop, right? Because they, they had pulled a car over, none. Okay, so as far as I know, they had run the plate and it belonged to a serial killer, okay? But obviously, when I saw the gun unholstered as I'm driving by, I look in, it's just some black dude then. <laughs> you know, I like, it, it could be told, I mean, it's probably just completely random ha happenstance. It's just something that happened where I was like, huh, you know, given all the things that are going, it just, I don't know. I don't, I, again, I don't know what to do with that. I'm not, I'm not making any kind of racist accusation, nothing. It's just given what's going on all over the place, I, I noticed it, obviously, because I've never seen a cop with their gun out of their holster in a live scenario. And of course, you know, of course, it's just some black dude driving the car and kind of looking out like, you know, I mean, like if you're like, well, what did he look like? It's like, he just looked black. You know, he's he's probably 30 years old. Like he didn't look super scared. He didn't look like he was in trouble or I mean, but I, you know, I just drove by, but it was just some black dude, you know, I was like, wow. I actually thought about getting off the freeway, going back around and then coming back just to see, you know, like, if this guy ends up cuffed or what and like but again could have been a stolen car could have been a, a million things it's just like given the situation right now i was just like wow you know but uh yeah anyway so that's what i got subscribe to the channel ring the bell 